Um, the exhibition is called Unveiled, 200 Years of Glamour, and it presents some of the Victoria and Albert Museum's most beautiful, romantic, but also historically important wedding dresses. The earliest dress is 1828, and our most recent is 2008, so it's 200 years. Um, it contains not just bridal wear, but also garments worn by bridegrooms, not very many. Bridegrooms are less good at keeping their clothes, or perhaps their wives are less good at hanging on to them. Um, and it contains photographs of the brides, many of the brides and grooms. Uh, it includes film, which is fantastic, because three of the dresses in the exhibition you can actually see on the film with the brides wearing them. And the film also includes some royal weddings. Wow. Royal weddings are important in Britain. Uh, they're things that we all enjoy watching, and they can influence fashion. Okay, so I guess the, the spectacular dresses in and of themselves are just the beginning of the experience? Yes, I think that um, the spectacle is important. A wedding provides a spectacle. Uh, I think the way the exhibition is designed, it's chronological, it takes you on a journey. It uh, takes you through history, it takes you through the history of fashion, but it also takes you through social history. And many, many of these dresses have really interesting stories attached to them. And in fact, that was one of my criteria for choosing them. Um, the garments had to be robust enough to travel. They had to be able to carry the story. But also, I wanted them to have the greatest possible meaning for people today. Um, so that they would look at these dresses and when they read about the histories of the brides and the grooms, that would unlock memories for them and trigger thoughts both about the past, about their ancestors perhaps, uh, and about their own, their own lives and their futures. Okay, well, one of the things that's quite noticeable about this exhibition is that not all of the gowns are white. What's that about? Uh, well, white has been a popular colour for bridal wear since the 18th century, a long time. But in the 18th and 19th century, it was a wealthy woman's colour. It was an extremely impractical colour to have in your wardrobe, unless you were rich. Um, we didn't have the advantage of washing machines in the past, or dryers, or dry cleaners. So keeping clothes clean was very difficult. Um, and so only a wealthy woman would even contemplate having white dresses. Um, and above a certain age, however rich you were, it was considered inappropriate to wear white. It was a young woman's colour. Um, other women chose coloured dresses uh, for practical reasons, um, because all these dresses in the past were worn again. There was no concept of a dress for a day in the 19th century. And so you wore a dress that was going to fit into your life, into your community. Um, and also, for economic reasons, other women, they just knew that um, it had to be something practical, like a washable cotton. And there's a wonderful example of a washable cotton in the show. Okay. Um, do you have a favourite piece? I have lots and lots of favourites, and it's always hard to come down to talk about just one favourite. Um, so I'm going to talk about a favourite, which is just to my left of where I'm standing here. And this is um, a very spectacular dress made by Charles Frederick Worth, who we know is the father of couture. Um, it was bought from his fashion house in Paris uh, by a very wealthy, and you had to be wealthy to go to Worth, a uh, young American woman, and it is beautifully, the skirt of the outfit is immaculately embroidered. Uh, it's embroidered with artificial pearls in a floral pattern, but it also incorporates three-dimensional bellflowers. And I think bellflowers are quite interesting. They often come up on wedding dress. And I found a letter in our archive when I was doing research, and the woman wrote saying she was, she'd love us to have her veil with bells on it, with wedding bells on it. And I wondered whether that was why people liked bell flowers. I, admit, I can't substantiate this, but I always think of wedding bells when I see that dress. Um, it must be incredibly difficult to travel with something that is so fragile, that is, has, has such beautiful embroidery on it, and so much delicate work. Uh, well, every single bead and tassel were checked um, to make sure the dress was stable enough to travel. Um, some elements of it were encased in their own little silk bags to make sure that they didn't move too much when it was um, in, the con you know, in its crate, in the container. So we are, we are very, very careful. And everything, everything that's in this show had, were, had to be robust enough to travel. 
everything was also conserved. Some things had many hours of conservation work done to them before before we decide, you know they were ready to to, to come. Um, some will not be in the V&A exhibition um, because they need a, they'll need a rest by the time they get back to the V&A. Right. Um, so we have to make lots of judgments about how long we can put things out, how important the dress is. Um, so why is it important then that um, collections like this are a collected in the first place, but preserved and taken care of, and available to be seen by the public. Um, you know, maintaining them for public view is obviously an awful lot of work. But why is that important? Well, I think access is at the heart of what museums do today. Uh, we have these very large collections, um, and the collections are there because they tell us about the past, and they, if we think that think more deeply about them and uh, explore their histories, they can tell us a lot about the present too, about the societies that have preserved them. Um, and so we need, to, we need to bear that in mind. Some garments in our collection um, would never be able to travel. In fact, they would never even be conserved. But that doesn't prevent us from enabling people to see them. Uh, we now have the World Wide Web. We are so lucky having the web. We have our Search the Collection site. We have many thousands of garments on this site. And many of them have photographs attached to them. So that's another way of, ha of seeing these objects from the past and informing ourselves about them. So for the people who are coming through this exhibition mm. um, and seeing these beautiful gowns and, and marvelling mm. at, at how they've survived, what would you like them to, to think and to feel as they go through and what would you like them to take away? Well, Vina is one of the world's leading museums of art and design. So, and because of that, we are very lucky in that we have garments uh, of the highest possible quality of design and craftsmanship. There's a lot of craftsmanship in this exhibition. And I hope that people uh, will be, they can get close enough because of the wonderful design of the exhibition to see the marvelous work that handwork has gone into a lot of the um, garments and also the innovative design. You know, we've got 200 years of wedding dress here and the wedding dress is still relevant to brides today. And that is due to design and innovation um, and utilizing the technologies of one's time. So I'd like them to take that away with them and the beauty, and the beauty of the garments. Um, I also hope it will make people more curious about objects. Um, I love looking at things. I'm a thing person. And I, can, I only have to look at a thing, and all these questions pop into my head. And I hope with the information we've given the public, they will start questioning their own objects and maybe go home and look at some, a photograph of a granny and say, what is she wearing there? Yeah. Why did she choose that? Where did she buy it? Why did she go to that place to buy it? Why did she have herself photographed in it? And I think we can learn so much, not just about our own lives and our own families, but about society as a whole through that. So it's about sharing our history, uh, yes. our joint history, and, and exploring our individual history and perhaps finding our place in the world. I think so. It's about identity, um, and it's about community. And I think the great thing about the v V&A bringing an exhibition to the Western Australian Museum is that um, we are sharing our collection with a much, much wider audience, but we are at the same time learning from the Western Australian Museum. You have a lovely exhibit um, of wedding dress alongside ours, uh, which I find absolutely fascinating. It, there's a wonderful waistcoat. I want to know more about it. And so I think we, we, are, we are, through networking, through partnering each other, we are starting a debate. And that is what life should be about. It should be about communication and sharing. Lovely. Edwina Ehrman, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.